My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are doing Paint Your Pet. All right, so I'm going to show you a lovely model, a couple of them actually. Oh, out of frame, but it's okay. Yeah, miss me. I'm back. All right, so we've got a little kitty cat here. Um, we have a beautiful puppy dog. Speaking of puppy dogs, you'll hear mine today. And I'm gonna, speaking of my puppy dog, that is my puppy dog. This is Ira. Isn't she cute? All right, so this is our model. And by the way, we have, we have lots of pets online. So we have all these templates for sale. They are all formatted to fit an 11 by 14 canvas. Yes, I am painting on a bigger canvas today. That is so that you can see me better all right so that makes it a lot easier uh, but everything online is formatted to fit an 11 by 14 canvas so it's really awesome and we have just a gazillion different types of animals we have just about every dog breed we've got horses we've got turtles we've got parrots we've got ducks uh, so all kinds of fun stuff for you all right so let's talk about our supplies a little bit so of course we have paint and you'll see the supply list online we have all that for you You'll see the kind of brushes that we use. So we have our little family here, cute little family. So this is Big Daddy. All right, and then Mama, and then Little Buddy, and then Little Bit. All right, and then of course we've got paper towel or a rag and water to give our little family a bath. And then paint and just, you know, paper plates. All right, and then we, again, we've got canvas for sale. If you don't have any of that, we can ship it right to you with free shipping, so that's awesome. All right, so to get started also, I like to have a little Sharpie nearby and then also a ruler. And I've done a lot of groundwork here first because the pattern today is Buffalo Check, um, which is awesome. It's very um, easy to do. Ish. <laughs> It is easy. It's just time consuming, okay? Um, but a ruler helps, and then I'm going to teach you a little trick on graphing it out. And I definitely love the use of a black Sharpie on this because you really need that firm, dark border to really, you know, help give you a, a boundary around that, especially with the coloring being uh, the black and the gray and the white. All right, so first things first, we've traced out all of our templates, and again, we have all these for you online. Tipsyartist.com, shameless plug. <laughs> all right, so what we've got here is, and then I've, you know, I've got my ruler work all done. Some people in class, they kind of go, okay, how in the world am I gonna do all this? It doesn't even matter where you start. I just started right here in the center. So I just picked a spot in the center, started there, did my lines. I start off doing all my horizontal lines first. So I just, you know, did that all the way up and down. Okay, and then I do vertical lines. So then I, I go across this way, all right? So having this size of a square is super easy with a ruler. That just makes it a lot easier for you. All right, then this is where you're gonna have to use your noggin a little bit. Just calm down and just think. Don't, maybe don't start drinking just quite yet, okay? Because you do need to, and then you drink later. Uh, but this is where you might need to kind of, okay, map it out a little bit. So this is what I tell people. This is an easy trick. I always tell people to start with their black first. That's your core central color. Um, and then black is always surrounded by gray. So I've got my black, and then just know that every time there's a black square, Black has gray on top and to the side, to the other side, and to the other side of it. All right, so if you just focus on the alternating of your black and your gray first, then what will naturally fall out will be that second row of that gray and white. And this is usually when, when I'm in a show and I'm telling people this and they've had a few cocktails or just, they just glaze over and space out and just look at me like I'm crazy. But I swear it does work, so I take my pencil. That way, you know, if you do have a little bit of a oops, you can, you know, renegotiate with your 
you know, mapping out of your buffalo check here. But I take my pencil and I write B for black, and then I write G for gray, and then, so I'm going to start, again, start, just start with a horizontal line. So let's say we started here, so it's just G, B, G, B, G, B, G, you know, or if you're a fan of the BGs, then you can go B, G, B, G, B, G. That's so corny. Okay, but anyway, that's kind of funny. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I hear you laughing. Okay, so start there first, then do it in a vertical. So do your horizontal first, then do a cross of your vertical, and then just continue to focus on just putting those grays around your blacks. And just that alternating of gray, black, gray, black, okay? So, and then I promise what really does happen is you'll find that what's left is those empty, you know, those rows of just empty white so wherever whatever is white you don't want to write w for white because you just want it to be white because here's what's nifty and awesome is that the entire canvas is painted and primed white so it you don't have to paint that so that's a beautiful thing all right so then got all that mapped out and then i took the let me show you a little template here so i've got these beautiful templates online little leaves so i traced around those and then I've got my shape of whatever your puppy dog is. We've traced around that. We did the ruler. We did the buffalo check. That is an option too, by the way. If you are just not a big fan of the buffalo check, you can do a solid color. You can do, you know, you can take a, a washer from home, which is those little metal, you know, metal circles or like a quarter. You can do circles. You can take your ruler and just do stripes, you know, if that's if you're more. So there's, there's options there with pattern if you want to just do something different. And of course, just one solid color too is also awesome. And then with your template package is also a rose, okay? So we have a lovely rose shape. I'm going to be adding that, uh, that in later here for the little collar. Um, so, but if you wanted to do just little like rose patterns all over, you know, we're gonna have an example for that on our website too. So you can do that too, super precious, awesome. All right, so here we are. We are really pretty good to go on this. And our next stage now is to go ahead and paint in just the black squares and also the gray. So I'm gonna teach you a little bit of mixing. So. Black, of course, is super easy, just pure black, and then gray is also extremely easy. And I'm going to be using my Little Buddy brush for this. All right, so here's Little Buddy. Okay, he's got the little flat top there. He's awesome. So what's cool about him is, you know, he can do, like, hold him over to the side. All right, I just noticed something. See how that little brush hair sticking out? I swear I've not been drinking. They're like, what? She is all over the place. Okay, just that's gonna drive you nuts. So I'm gonna actually cut that off because man, that is gonna be a bad little dude here in a minute. When you start to paint, you do not want that like straying off and wow, you know, there goes your buffalo check. All right, so make sure your little hairs are all you know combed and nice and neat. All right. Um, so we got that, and then let's start our mixing here. All right, so we've got gray. So it is going to be a dollop of our white, and then a little touch of our black. All right, and then we're gonna talk about technique, because I kind of did a little squirrel a while ago, and I didn't finish what I was gonna say. Uh, but mixing these two together, we've got white, we've got black. It's going to make our gray. Isn't that beautiful? There's our gray. And you can mix up a whole bunch of this too so that you've got you know, continuity with your gray that runs all the way through. And so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what this looks like. So as I start to paint here, what's beautiful about Little Buddy, you can hold it like a pencil, go towards the canvas like this. That'll make nice, thin lines like that, right up next to the edge. Then you can also hold it over to the side Okay, this will give you really good coverage. So parallel to the canvas and just over to the side here. All right, really good coverage there. Isn't that beautiful? You just never see anything more extraordinary than that. It's amazing. All right, so there is our lovely gray and then we will have just solid black and then again, whatever is uh, white, just leave it white. Now, if you have a little boo-boo or something, 
Then you can do little touch-up white, and then I would recommend either your little buddy or our precious little bit here. They can, you know, little kiddos can come in and help, you know, kind of <laughs> fix up stuff. All right, so here we go. I am going to put on, there we go. That's good enough. Supergirl glasses. All right, so I can see, and then I'm gonna be painting Buffalo Check for a hot minute. All right, so here we go. I'm so excited. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> All right. So, are we done? Oh, dang it. One, one more thing of gray. Okay. Man, so close. So close. Okay, now we're done. Isn't he cute? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do our lovely little leaves that come up. So I'm going to give you a couple of different fun color options here. And I've got some green and blue loaded up. And then also we've got our white nearby. So let me show you some options that you can do. So if you want to do just basic, you know, white, spring, green, I'll show you that first. So lots of options. So green, let's do a little dollop of green. All right, little dollop of white. And that will give you a really pretty spring green. You can go really light with this, add a whole bunch of white to it, and then go with more of like a mint green. So lots of fun options there. If you want it to be kind of a sage green, very lovely, you can do just very sparingly, just barely take that brush, just barely touch the black. See how small that is, tiny amount. Push that in. What happens is the black mixes with the white, makes it gray, and then that you know, can, ends up making this really beautiful sage with your green. So that's also a lovely, color option there. Then I'm going to show you some mixes with turquoise, which I think is also really pretty for leaves. So I am rinsing off my brush here and drying it off really well. And then let's go in with some turquoise. Let's try this next. All right, so it's going to be a dollop of the blue, dollop of the green, and then let's do a dollop of white. All right, so we're gonna mix all that together, and this will give us a really pretty turquoise color. All right, see how pretty that is? Now, here's some different things you can do. So you can take a lot more green and make it more of like a teal color, which is a very pretty leaf color. You can add more of the turquoise, I mean, I'm sorry, not turquoise, blue. So that'll take it to more of just that turquoise then you can also add just a lot more white to this, and then that gives you just more of like a sea foam color, which is really lovely as well. All right, so now we are all over the place with, you can just start to see all the different options of prettiness that can happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip into this mix, and I can even have a variety of different um, shades of this coming through in one leaf, which is also very pretty. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and use this mix. I'm a little bit more attracted to that for this particular painting. We're going to go ahead and do that. And then since we do have a lot of really small um, areas to paint into, lots of little curves in here, um, I will be using my little bit brush a lot more. So we've got little bits, as I mentioned before, kind of, well, I'll show you. See, those are what I call little bits, but they're just small liner brushes, and there's usually in a pack that you buy them, there's usually a big variety of how big they are. So for some of this, I'll use a bigger one, but when I get around those really tiny little corners, I'm gonna be using my smallest brush. So as I go to load it up, I wanna do a little twist between my fingers here, just like that. That loads it up, but it twists that brush into a nice, fine point. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is hold it like a pencil, and then I'm going to use this to go around those little edges. That is the only way 
but you can do a little tiny stroke like that, especially that tight corner, that curve, you have to use your little bit brush. So that's how I'm going to get around the edges. And then when I go to fill in, then of course I can just fill in with my little bit brush here. And if there's a lot more white in the mix, then of course that gives you really good coverage over the surface as well. So this will be my next step. I'm just going to take, you know, you've got those options there of different colors. Use your little bit brush and just, you know, hold it just like you hold a pencil. Come towards your canvas. That'll give you a lot more precision. If you are struggling a little bit with a shaky hand, another little trick here gives you a little bit of like a kickstand. Uh, rest the weight of your hand on your pinky like this and then that helps stabilize your hand to do this more detail work that's happening in here. All right, so another fun little trick for you. All right, so now we're just going to be painting in um, either all these shades of green or uh, turquoise into all of our pretty little leaves. So now we have beautiful turquoise leaves. There's a little bit of variance of uh, some mint green turquoise. It's all lovely. We have that going on. Um, our next step will be to do some details with our roses and our, uh, we've got that coming in. We also have the word that we can do. I am still detecting just a little bit of wet black that needs to set up and dry. So I think I'm going to go ahead and normally I would wait and do the lettering at the end, but I'm going to go ahead and do my lettering now. That gives us lots of time for drying and then I'll come back in and I'll work in my roses and my little feathers and those little fun details. All right, so for this, I need a pencil. I hope I have one to buy here. How good I do? All right, so I'm going to take my pencil first. I'm going to go ahead and freehand the name of my sweet little puppy dog here or you can just do something generic that makes you happy that inspires you for the day like love for example I'm gonna write love on mine because I actually don't have a French Bulldog I just thought it was super cute and also maybe if I do have a French Bulldog someday I'll just I'll name her love and then I'll be like love come here hey love it'd be awesome okay so like ah, prophetic all right so here we go I'm gonna hand write this on Plus, love's really easy, so, <laughs> all right. Then, I actually highly recommend, you know, not, just don't give yourself too much paint on this. I mean, if, for you purists who just, no, I want to learn how to paint this on, uh, I'm gonna, don't worry, I'll teach you how to do that. But if you just wanna do a Sharpie, it really is a lot easier to do your lettering with a Sharpie. So you can pencil it on first, and then you can even, uh, you know, use something, there's all kinds of, uh, we're going to be doing some letter templates too that we can sell online, and so you can trace around those, but again, Sharpie really makes it a lot easier. All right, so I'm going to show you what that is. You know, this is easy, but you just, you could actually just take it and then just follow along. All right, so that part's easy. I don't have to tell you how to write with a Sharpie, but here we go with the painting. Um, I'm going to use my little bit brush again and then here's my black paint and I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to do that little twist. So twist it between your fingertips and then see it takes the brush to that little fine point, makes it a lot easier to paint with. 
so this will give you a nice fine point to paint with. This is also pretty easy, but if you want to make it super, super easy, do a Sharpie. And i got to put on my glasses here. Alright, so I've still got my pen. I don't ever abandon that because that really helps you know if it fits into the space. Check your spelling, make sure it's all good. Then we're going to follow up here with our paint. Groovy, groovy. All right, so we have our beautiful word. Word. Sorry, I'm sorry that was <laughs> really nerdy. I'm a mom. I can be a nerd if I want to. Okay, so here we go. Next up, I think we're mostly dry here. So I'm going to go ahead and be brave, push through, and I'm going to do my roses and my cute little feathers and all that jazz. So, let's see here. I'm gonna actually do this with my pencil first and my glasses. I'm gonna put the pencil down so I don't put myself in the eye. All right, tool safety here. All right, so here we go. So I'm, I'm thinking, you know, we got kind of the neck thing happening here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do like Let's do a rose here. Now, making a rose, we've got your rose template. If you want to freehand on and have some flexibility with size, let me show you something nifty. All right, so doing roses, really easy. They are lumpy circles, lumpy circles, lumpy circles. That way you can be creative and kind of fit those in how you want. Uh, and then the leaf shape looks like this, parentheses, parentheses parentheses, parentheses, connect, okay, and again, parentheses, 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 yay, all right, it's as easy as that, okay, so just <sighs> relax and succeed, all right, so here we go, lumpy circles, that's what we got, and I'm going to do another little rose here. Precious baby's gonna have a little rose collar. All right, so here we go, little rose. And then I would still encourage you to use pencil. I'm gonna do a sharpie just so I can really see it. And I'm gonna go ahead and firm up those little lines so I can see them. Again, just little lumpy circles. All right, there we go. Then I'm gonna make uh, what looks like a little feather here. It's that same shape. Parentheses, parentheses. Okay, just like that. Connect. All right, and then put a few little leaves poking out. Just a few. And I'll do one here. I want to add some more doodads. Let's do a few, I can do a little line and then little diagonal lines off of that. Let's do another one. And I'll come close to you for that. So, that little last detail, and I'll show you'll see it a lot more when the paint makes it pop forward. Um, but basically, you just do a line coming out, okay? And then just like those sound effects. It's pretty cool. All right, so it's that basic design, little diagonal shapes. That's gonna make kind of a little fun feathery effect too that we'll uh, have here in just a moment. All right, so now we can start to paint into our rose here. And I would like some lovely pink. So I'm gonna do a little bit of red. Okay, and then some white. I'm going to mix this up. Alright, so I got my mama. Here's my mama brush. Or a little buddy works just fine too. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint this into those shapes. Alright, just solid color in there. 
and we're going to get that base down first. All right, and then more solid color in here. So this is just the base. Perfect. Big lumpy circles. Little lumpy circles. It's all good. Okay, so now we're going to do the overlay over the top. So first step is we're going to come back in with our little bit brush here. And I like, all right, here we go. Little bit. All right, and I'm going to do white first. So no matter what the color, so if you did a cream rose, uh, which would be, let's just show you. Give my people some options here. Kiss your luck. Girl, I do not like paint. Mm -mm. Okay, so gold and white makes a lovely like cream color. You can make it really, really light. This gives you a really light neutral. Okay, so that could be your base right now. That's another option fun. You could do purple uh, or lavender, which would just be purple and white. Okay, those are fun. All right, so now the next step, no matter what your base color is, is going to be a little bit and white. And the basic stroke on this is going to be half circles or like my parentheses thing. Okay, so parentheses, parentheses, and just push that around that shape in that circular pattern all the way towards the center. All right, and again, parentheses, parentheses, half circles, all the way towards the center. And again, all right, parentheses, parentheses, all the way towards the center. All right, so that's beautiful, you could actually leave it just like that. Just kind of depends on how simple, minimal you want to be. That's always an option. I'm going to add one more layer here. So I'm going to come back in with my darkest color. So um, because we have pink, darkest color for me is going to be red. If you were doing lavender, darkest color for you would be purple or even maybe a pretty cobalt blue if you want to get kind of radical. Um, if you are doing this light cream base and you've, you've done your layer of white and you want to come in darkest color, then you could do this really dark gold. Also, uh, a hint of gray could be quite lovely there as well, especially with a white rose. White rose, you could be going back and forth between uh, white and gray, which is also really pretty cool. All right, so here we go. Stroke is the same, except in the very beginning, I'm gonna start with my red. And I do one little pop of color right in the center, kind of push on that surface, just a little tiny push, push, and then lift off, okay? And so again, let's show that one more time. Little push, and then lift off, and little push, and then lift off. All right, that's your center shadow in the middle of the rose. Now, next up, I'm gonna do same stroke, and because this is all pretty wet, it's going to get a nice little soft blend with what's already there with that white, which is nice. Kind of makes it a little bit more subtle. All right, so we're gonna just do a few of these, not much. Okay, and then here again. All right. All right, beautiful. So there are sweet little roses. All right, now I'm going to do a fun little, what do I do? I'm going to do a, let me do my leaves next. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, sorry. Had to be a, I was going to stereotype and say I was being a woman and not making up my mind, but you get in trouble for stuff like that now. All right, so I'm just not making up my mind just for, no matter what, just, you know, just being me, Tiffy. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do little leaves. So 
So parentheses, 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 parentheses. Isn't that sweet? Parentheses, parentheses, come to a point. And again. All right, so those are my sweet little leaves. Now I'm gonna come in and do my feather. So let me talk about my decision making there and kind of why I went back and forth. So for the most part, you always wanna do your lighter colors first because I knew I was gonna come in with a black and so I just, I need to be real careful. Once you get wet black, then you're gonna be, if you come in with those lights and they can blend into that, it's gonna muddy them all up. So we don't want that. So I wanna do all my lights first now I'm going to come in with um, some black paint and I'm going to go ahead and do a base here because I want to make sure we get really good coverage on this. So I'm going to go ahead and cover up all of this. This is going to be what will be kind of like a little feather here. And then I'm going to do these fun little feather shapes which looks like just a line, okay, do it again, and here, and again, and then the little diagonals that kind of pop off the end here. Now, just as soon as I said to work light and dark, I'm about to come in with white over the top. However, the exception here is that I actually want the desired blending because I'm going to be coming in with white, but I know it will go to gray. I'm actually really good with that. So that's the only reason why I know this is going to work. All right, so I'm gonna come back in with my little bit brush and a little bit of white here. And I know the black is still wet, but that's okay, because I don't mind a little bit of this gray happening. So I'm gonna hold this brush just like a pencil, make that come around. And then I'm gonna do just echo the same thing that I just did, kind of go over it with the white. I'm going to get that soft blend of that gray because the paint's still wet. So it works for me. do just a little bit of a stripe here with the white on this bigger one here. So I'm just going to take it across and I just barely lay the brush on the side. That way I get really full coverage over the top. So that's fun. And then I'm going to do one more soft little blend around the outside to kind of make it belong because it was, it was just a little bit like a whole lot out on the surface. So I'm going to outline it and then go ahead and come back in to that center. And again, it's kind of going with that light gray. And then I'm going to do a few little wispies up here at the top for my little feather. One more time in with the black over the top here. I'm actually changing my mind again. I'm gonna go all gray on this feather. Yeah, because I wasn't digging on that stripe thing. Nope. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so now I'm going to come back in with my black. Do a little outline around the edge there where I need it. Nice. Okay, and then one little line right down the center here. Do you see where this 
gets lost the end so I kind of come back in where you hit black to black I'm gonna do a light gray right over the top of that just to create contrast so that it kind of pops out in front all right so there we go we are so done with this cute little puppy dog all right this is amazing okay so here we are we are done it's been a beautiful experience See, Buffalo Check wasn't too bad. We got it all done. And again, we've got those different options you could try. But we just wanna thank you again so very, very much for Penny with us today. And remember, all the supplies are there for you with you know, supply lists and everything you need is on our website, tipsyartist.com. Until next time.